Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grays. My name is Kylie Gray, and you are on our farm in Central Oregon. We are a garden zone three with a frost risk all year round. And we are in, it's October 21st. And this is my garden, but this is my sanctuary. So welcome to my sanctuary. And I wanna take you around what it looks like on this beautiful, beautiful autumn day. And we are actually quite warm today. The sweater is going to, it's perfect for right now, but it's going to be a little too warm for this type of cardigan in just a couple hours. This lilac is losing its leaves because it is fall and it's got some frost damage on it. And this is started as a sprig we got dug up from somebody's yard, but it has been so warm this fall that it is starting to bud up, which is not great. So I have my geese over here. This is... Beatrix and Harriet. We hatched them out from eggs that I bought off eBay. <laughs> and they're quite noisy, but they do protect our flock, which is a good thing. There is so much in this garden still. And I want to tell you, uh, I have never had so much food coming out this late in October. And obviously, unless the weather drastically changes in the next two week and a half, we're gonna have a lot of food coming out of here still in November. So I want to kind of tell you what I did unintentionally to get this food for this season. So if we are in Lapine, Oregon, it is like, it's like classified as a subarctic zone of Oregon. With that being said, it's really difficult to grow a lot of food. And a lot of people don't think you can in this area. Now, there is quite a few people busting that myth, obviously, that you can grow food, you can be productive, but a lot of people still believe that the summer is the only time to grow it. They think that our growing season is 80 days, 60 days or whatever, and it they make it, it that, that it's very difficult to grow food. But I want to, actually challenge that mindset a little bit because it's late October and I still have food. There's a spring garden, a summer garden, and a fall garden. And you're, and some, if you live in a more mild climate, you can have a winter climate. Now, I am still learning very much, a, or a winter garden. I'm still very much learning about a winter garden and wondering if we, if it is all possible. I'm going to experiment with some things in my greenhouse. Obviously outside would be a little trickier. You could come up with something like a low tunnel or mini greenhouse. It would still be pretty hard with how cold we get, but there are some super cold Cold loving plants like spinach or bok choy or endive. There's some things that you could trial and air and see what really works for you. But a spring and fall garden are relatively the same if you're in a average climate. So think you can things, basically everything I can growing in this garden and a lot more, you can grow in a spring and fall garden. Now with our short season and with our harsh climate where we live, this all went through summer. So in a lot of places, we get hot here, so we're in the high desert. So we're not one of those cold climates. Like if you live in Alaska and you're a zone three and you might, like an 80 degree day is hot to you. An 80 degree day here is not hot to us. We definitely get up in the 90s definitely in the hundreds it's not unusual we are in the high desert so it gets super hot but then we can drop that severe temperature and freeze at night even when it's in the 90s in summer so we have that catch-22 where we have to protect our cold crops from the sun and protect our frost tender crops from the cold the frost in summer this pine tree right behind me he's affectionately called he has a face his name is treebeard and treebeard provides this garden with shade which i this garden was we did not this is just kind of haphazard how we planned it when we we bought this property in 2015 it was a foreclosure it had this coop we have fixed it up some it had this area with the plywood on the bottom and this two by six on top. We have added this tin over here to replace it because that was rotting. But the rest of it was here. I have no idea what the previous owners used it for. It didn't look like it was used for a garden. It, there was no sign of compost, no sign of life, no sign of anything. I don't, maybe they just used it as an extra animal pin but the way it was set up it was difficult to get into from the chicken yard which was here and 
it the chicken yard originally stopped right at this post and we extended it the length of the garden just so it would kind of cohesively match and where this gate was there was a pl piece of plywood that went on the bottom which we cut and there was another piece of plywood that was a door so you had to hop over the plywood to get in here so we could not for the life of you couldn't just walk in you had to go over the two foot plywood to get in here so we have no idea what this was originally used for I would say it was a garden but that would be awkward to get into for a garden I would say it was for chickens but there was no entrance from the chicken coop to get into here that would say maybe they had some sort of other animal in here I have no idea what they used it for but it was already fenced in so one when we when we started this garden that was one less thing I had to buy was the fence now I was told deer are gonna be a major issue they're not going to you're not gonna be able to grow a garden with deer with this low of a fence because I am I'll just give you an example. I am five, six and three quarters, and I am much taller than this fence. It's about a five foot fence, and the deer will certainly jump that. They can jump a six foot fence, which they definitely do. So, but I will tell you, no deer has ever gotten to this garden if the gate was closed. This two by six on the top, deer have a depth perception thing, and that just completely throws off their brain. So this five foot fence with the two by six on the top and the plywood on the bottom just really freaks the deer out and they have never jumped over this fence. Now, they will jump over my six foot garden fence that is just wire which is why I had to extend it with hot wire this year. So they will definitely jump a five foot fence, but with the two by sixes and the plywood, I really just think they can't visually figure out how to get in here. <laughs> and it's, we've been in this garden for f five, six years. So obviously it's not just a fluke. They don't get in here. So this tree really benefits, tree beard really benefits this garden, which people told me not to grow in shade in, um, because you typically want a garden in full sun, you really want that, but that because this fence was already here, we made it work. And I was like, whatever, it's just gonna have to work because at that point in life, it we I wasn't able to afford a garden to put up a garden fence. And so and this was already here, so that's what we used. But this tree has actually been, a. I recommend anybody, if you're growing in Lapine, that having this garden with a tree, it creates this microclimate where it's about 20 degrees cooler in this garden versus my large garden where it's full sun over there, which is great for things like growing onions and my carrots do really well over there still. Um, you can pump out a lot of produce in that full sun garden, but here you can also, some things like my broccoli or my cauliflower or lettuce or kale likes to bolt and go to flower over and put out seed because it's too hot and they like their cold crop. They're good fall and spring crop. They do really well in this garden, even with the 90 degree days because of tree beard. So it has created a perfect balance for this high desert climate and allows me to over summer all my cold crops, if that makes any sense. That is how I'm able to do this. So these got planted. I came in here and direct sowed. We do a no dig method where I just add compost. Um, we did cardboard down in the walkways the first year we did it, which was like I said, five, six years ago. I think I will cardboard again next year and put down a fresh layer of stuff. We are dealing with a crap ton of weeds and the pathways and far less weeds in the beds. And I don't like having to weed my pathways, you know, you know. With this garden and where we live, I highly recommend having a tree because it offsets the heat of the summer and allows you to get these cold crops without them flowering and going straight to seed because cold crops like cold which is perfect for a spring and summer or spring and fall garden. So this is because it's late October and we'll probably be able to push this into November. This is a fall, what is called a fall garden. But I started this garden in June and actually some of it in April. So when in our short season, this is kind of, you're learning as a gardener, you're always learning. You are always learning. It's always, it, there's always experimenting. The weather patterns change, where you live might change. Everything change, like things just change. One summer you can be so cold and rainy here and some one summer you can be blazing and not get any rain for three months so you just never know what you're going to get but i will say i've had all types of climates f for summer wet and rainy and hot and blazing and not seeing rain for months and months and months and this garden does well regardless but this is the first year i've planted so late that i've been able to have this beautiful of a garden this late in the year and it is because 
I direct sowed a lot of vegetables like Brussels sprouts and cabbages and things and a chicken got in here and ate all my seeds and I didn't think anything germinated so Azure Standard which is a bulk grocery delivery they do a lot of organic whole food type things it's an Oregon company they ship nationwide but they also have plants in the spring and they had clearance cold crop plants in June and I was like perfect so I was able to get all a ton of these plants for dirt cheap in June I ended up planting I think I planted the 23rd of June and they were starts they were little I have it on a video I'll see if I can find it and I planted them right before we went on our beach trip and they, I believe I got them like the 16th or something of June I don't know somewhere around there and I planted them out late June. So that is kind of where our timing is. If you're wanting cabbages, maybe you could push it into July because I had a lot of cabbages that were more than ready and I still do, they're getting a little crazy. You'll see, we'll harvest them today and you'll be like, oh yeah, should have harvested that a bit ago. Then it, what can you do? And so you could probably push some quick, quick maturing cabbages into July but late June is definitely where you want to plant if you want a fall garden which is kind of counter in your brain you're like I shouldn't be starting my uh, fall garden when it's just now summer but if you are in our climate in our central Oregon climate where you need something or even in a colder climate where you're like I'd love to have cabbages or broccoli or cauliflower in October November heck yeah in my garden not just preserved or put in your fridge but like fresh that was the perfect timing and that is what I'm learning so you could also succession sow each row a couple weeks apart which is something I might do maybe I'll spring for maybe I'll do like a June mid June planting late June planting early July mid July and we could kind of that might be a way to go and especially for video purposes and experimental purposes because you're all learning from you see what I do and it helps or you're you all get to see and if I do it succession that might be a really good idea for next year and just see week by week how it works now I had a lot come up that I did direct so that ended up actually germinating that the chicken didn't get and you'll see that's way behind so it really helped to have starts so there's that to think of you can start your own starts I've had really bad success with starts this year I also am neglectful so that does not help the situation here let me get some of my bags that's a lot of yakking for you a lot of good yakking I brought out my bags okay so here I have calendula I brought out some of these baggies and Tomorrow we're supposed to get a lot of rain, so I thought this would be the perfect day. These are the seed heads. And this is all the calendula seed. And I'm just saving my own seed. That is a chicken feather. So I just pull them off like that. I'll show you what a whole head looks like. There's feathers everywhere. I can't, it's just falling away in my hand. Calendula is super hardy. It can take a lot of frost. It's super medicinal, super you can make cut flowers out of it. It has amazing base life. Super hardy, obviously. We've been freezing every night, basically since August, middle of August. We were lucky we didn't have any frost in July. That's pretty good. We got some crazy cats over here climbing the coop. So here's a head. You can see it. My husband just called and then I just spilt a ton of my seeds on the ground. That's okay. So, okay, Melindula seed, what I have found is my sunflowers, they will come back year after year if they drop their seed. I still save them because I don't know how harsh our winter is gonna be and I don't know if the birds will eat it or whatever. And I want to make sure that I have seed of my own garden. And the sunflowers tend to volunteer. I always have sunflower volunteers, always. I never have calendula volunteers. So I have been very diligent every year to come out and make sure that I have enough calendula seeds. And I've been sharing them. I've shared them with a lot of my friends and family. I'm doing a giveaway and I might as well just add some calendula seeds. Um, we'll be doing calendula seed, my walking onions, and my sunflowers from Sunflower Alley. So it'll be just a mixture of everything. Everything's cross-pollinated, everything's just fun. But I thought uh, a lot of you have really enjoyed, especially Sunflower Alley this year, that you would get to have a little piece of my garden in your garden. 
so I saved my seed and I replant it. A lot of this calendula is my seed. Of course, I am a seed aholic and can't help but buy more seed. So, of course, there's always more seed to be had. But I don't think I will need to buy any seed next year because I have so much of my own. All these beauties. So calendula, I'm gonna harvest. I'm before I I'm filming this video before I come in and really harvest all this calendula harvest calendula for its medicinal purposes you pick the heads of the flower which right now make my garden look really beautiful and i wanted you to see that but also it'll encourage it to grow but i also also am aware that when i pick these heads we we have been fortunate where we haven't gotten into the teens at night we are normally way into the teens at night by this time of year and we have not we've just been getting into the low 20s there might be other parts of the area that have gotten to the like 19, 18. We still haven't. So everything is doing, the cold hardy things are doing very well because it hasn't. But there is a point where even these cold hardy things won't do well, if you know what I mean, if it's constantly in the teens. Once I harvest these heads, it's encouraging them to keep blooming, which is why there's so many blooms already because I've harvested the heads quite a bit this year. But if I harvest them today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and because this is a lot of heads. There's so much calendula that it might get cold next week or the week after and they might be gone, which is fine. It is tis the season for it to be gone. He's huge, he needs hers. And if I'm harvesting the flowers themselves, they're not going to seed, gives me less seed to save. So we have to leave some of the heads and if I want them to go to seed, which I do. So I'm gonna set this camera down and go around and do a better job of getting my seed. But so far, we're getting a good amount. If I wouldn't have spilt it. So these seeds don't just seem to, they don't overwinter very good for me ever. So maybe they do for you. They don't here, at least for me. Okay, so I've harvested quite a bit of seed now, and I was gonna harvest the flowers over here, and these are my doubles, and they're beautiful. I want them, I'm not gonna harvest them. I'm gonna let them ripen up. At, I'm gonna let them go to seed. I want to save a lot of this patch, because there's a lot of the strawberry ones, a lot of the pink ones, a lot of the double white and yellow. They're so cute. I'm gonna harvest a lot of these orange and yellow ones. You've seen me do this 150,000 times. Just put them on my little basket lid. Some of them have dark inside and some of them do not. They smell sweet. This seed pod, oh, that one's ready to go, I'll we'll just harvest that. Beautiful pea blooms, so gorgeous. Gorge. I try and only harvest the ones that are going to go bad soon. <sighs> because I don't, I guess I could freeze broccoli, but we eat broccoli a lot fresh. This is gonna be really hard with one hand. Let's see. Do you see the separation of all that broccoli? normally a bit tighter like a normal broccoli head that means it's wanting to go to seed soon I'm gonna get this guy oh my gosh I don't even know how to harvest this What 
do you think, Bobs? Huh? Oh, this guy is huge. Well, guys, that is a giant cauliflower. You can see over here, it's starting to separate. That means it's coming to the end of its life. Cauliflower leaves, broccoli leaves are all edible. You can stir fry them, you can eat them, chop them up in your salad, they're thicker. I've been feeding them to my cows and my chickens. Whew. Baby potato. I've already harvested this row of potatoes. I had a lot of volunteers. I didn't plant any potatoes this year in here. They're just simply volunteers, which is fine by me. Might do a veggie plate tonight. We have a harvest party. And I think that's what I'm going to bring. I have a lot of broccoli and cauliflower and actually I have some other vegetables up here I wanted to harvest. They're looking sad and I thought they were goners, but they ain't. I'm not sure how long you were in manual focus for. I apologize for the blurriness. But these are my Parisian market carrots. They're doing quite well. We're gonna harvest up some of these for the harvest party. They are the cutest and best tasting carrots you'll ever have. So, we're just harvesting these up. Oh, they're getting crazy. We got a t basket full of veggies. I gotta gather up all my seeds. I got some sunflowers. I just finished chopping down the rest of Sunflower Alley this morning. Gotta gather those up. Gotta get my calendula out of here. Gotta get, I have a bunch of potatoes still in the ground in here. <laughs> you wanna see? These are all volunteers. I did one row. I actually gotta take off this sweater. It's blazing. They're all mixed in because they were volunteers. Holy crap. <laughs> are all left over from tiny potatoes. They grew huge. Volunteers are amazing. I love them so much. They overwintered in our harsh climate here in this garden. They're gorgeous. So I've been getting a ton of free tomato potatoes out of here. Uh, and this whole row and if another row has a bunch of potatoes in it, I need to harvest. And yeah, oh, there's a patch of col or chamomile. I keep forgetting about that. This garden is just glorious right now, guys. It's just glorious right now. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's gonna change the weather very soon this week. Look at these beauty Brussels in there. This is the first year I've been able to grow Brussels sprouts as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. I, this is a beautiful October garden. If you've ever grown a fall garden, let me know what you guys like to grow and where you're at and what zone you're in so I can kind of compare. I like to see, I learn a lot from you guys as well in the comments. This cat digging a hole. Hey, get out of there, you crazy kitten. You're, oh, you're gonna be filthy. So thank you guys so much for following along with me and I will see you on my next video. Look at this beauty, isn't she gorge? Still so much to get out of this garden, so much bounty. And if I wouldn't have planted late on accident, I wouldn't have had all this. So thank you guys for following along with me. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye guys.